Come on, come on, come on, come on, Alright then folks, so I'm sending a, a bunch of rusty old crap to um, Bushcraft EST. Uh, like, he's a he's a YouTube bushcrafter and um, he seems to be uh, recently doing a lot more, uh, doing a lot more, um, what, uh, making things like, basically got a, <laughs> It, building himself a little carpentry uh, workshop in the in the woods, uh, pretty cool. And he's a he's an incredible videographer. He's a he really a quite talented in getting the right shots and uh, putting the camera in the right place. So, because I feel guilty about sending rusty rusty stuff to people, um, I, I figured we'd make him a a quick uh, <laughs> a quick quick draw knife or push knife, I suppose as well. Could, Depends on how you use it, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, so it's starting off a, a little chunk of I want tool steel because that's what I'm happy with. Um, just pack it down a size. And uh, and what is the new vice? My skinny ass next to it looks even bigger, doesn't it? Eh? <laughs> okay. We're just just roughing it out here with a grinder. Uh, it turned out to be a really, really easy knife to make. Um, combination of things make it easy. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it as a first project if anyone's thinking about getting into making knives. Um, you know, just the just fact you've, you've only got a grind on one side and um, and what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why to be honest. Chain cobblers, and I. Okay, so what? Uh, just roughed out a blank and just uh, just tidying up the fire at the minute. Ta da! That's the blank, that's the basic shape, isn't it? If anyone doesn't know, a, a, a pull knife is a, a draw knife. Um, but it's for roughing out, roughing out timber, I suppose. If you've got if you've got your lump of wood anchored, then um, this is a, a knife with two handles, yeah, and the blade in the middle, so you can pull it towards yourself and uh, and and shape a bit of timber. I'm just tidying up the grinding with the with the file before it gets heat treated. So the reason I'm making this for Steve here, yeah, I'm just um, this is one of the, one of the last jobs before we before we heat treat it. Um, it's fitting the handles, and we're not going to fit the handles for ages, but uh, because I've got to get the the metal hot to to make the handles fit, then it's it's best to do that before I heat treat the steel. Uh, and now I'm just heat treating this still. Either way, um, the re reason I've, I've chosen a, uh, a pull knife, a draw knife to send to Steve is um, he was he was using his uh, his pocket knife for, as a pull knife. So he'd, he'd welted a, a lump of timber onto the end of his his pocket knife and was was shaping shaping wood up like that, which is pretty ingenious. <laughs> I'd never seen that done before, but. Um, what? I don't know. Figured, figured he might enjoy this. Anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying intuitive metallurgy at the minute, um, and it seems to be working out alright. Uh, yeah, this is the reason I'm liking O1 tool steel so much. Right, um, the other harder steels, and like hardness isn't always a great thing because it makes it very hard to sharpen a knife, but. Um, Oh, you know, you have to be super critical with the with the temperatures and that. But I like with with O1, it really is this easy. I've I've obviously given it a quench, and uh, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna temper it back a bit. And if you saw my last video with the with the vice, um, you'll see I I put the put the jaws straight on top of the raked over fire after I quenched it. But now I'm now I'm gonna sit it beside the fire with a with a brick as a backdrop. So uh, you know. It's not going to get anywhere near as hot as it would do if I'd sat it on top. So, obviously, the vice jaws I wanted um, uh, I wanted them to be 
a lot more shatterproof than this. I mean, uh, and whereas whereas this blade, I want um, a lot more hardness in it. Yeah, that's why it's beside the edge. Anyway, <laughs> here you go. Lumps of brass. This is a 22 mil, no, 15 mil pipe fitting, and uh, I figured these would be nice little rings of brass for for the handles. Stop the handles splitting. Getting rid of the threads on the lathe and uh, just gonna part it off. Yep. Bit of epoxy. But I didn't have to use the epoxy, but you know, but embraces, <laughs> embraces. I've got it there, so why not? It'd be embarrassing if it came off, wouldn't it? See, normally with files and stuff, you'd just, uh, you'd just jam it on, and then, and then because you're Gonna jam the blade up inside it. It would, uh, you know, the wood would try and expand, and you'd it'd never lose the ring, would it? But whatever, both won't hurt, will it? Now just uh, clean the blade off both sides. So, like I say, a really, really simple little blade. If anyone fancied making one, like, um, you know, it'd be probably an easy thing to start with. Can because the blade's kind of naked without a sheath, or we'll just. Uh, just make a little little edge saver up. There's natural veg tan leather, and uh, we'll just glue it in place. It's always handy to have the super glue and um, the activator with the leather work because you know, I mean this this glue isn't going to hold it. It's just just a, for assembly basically until I get rivets and, and stitches in it. Speaking of which, here's the rivets, is them's rivets. <laughs> I do like a bit of riveting, especially the copper ones. <laughs> you know. Uh, pretty easy and really easy to get a nice result as well. Everyone should mess around with some copper rivets. Yeah, I've already got the Already put the press starts in the uh, in the in the other panel. Otherwise, I'd, I'd have no way of uh, setting them. But I, and here's my um, strap. Oh, I really shouldn't leave the camera on the bench with the uh, with the mallet there, should I? But that was a little punch for just shaking the ends of straps. Um, really cheap. All, all the leather working stuff so cheap on eBay, isn't it? Like, so that that was a, a groover. Give you somewhere to lay the thread, your stitching, and uh, this is a this, this is a prong. I don't know what it's called. Uh, it just just sets your spacing for the stitching. If you've got thin leather, you can go all the way through it with this thing. Obviously not if you've got a steel anvil at the back. But um, I was just using it to mark out, and then I made the rest of the hole with a what do you call it? Um, yeah, drill <laughs> in the drill press. Um, bench drill, as you call it here in the UK. But, and I'm just stitching it by hand because this is way too thick from a sewing machine. Way too thick. Right. Yeah, I quite like that hand stitching anyway. It lets you use a much thicker thread and under not in the corners off. Again, can't remember what this thing's called. Last thing's called a groover. Yeah. Oh no, I said the groover. What about the prongs? No idea what the prongs called. Stitchy prong prongs? I don't know. Whatever, and again, yeah, a chamfer tool. I don't know what this thing is called. And this is my uh, super patented uh, leather treatment vat. Like all, all, most of the leather tools that I've been using here, apart from the, the punches and that, uh, you can find on my leather working playlist. Like this vat and the half moon knife and. Well, that's it. Oh, yeah, the stitching pony as well. Yeah, I made that. That's that's good. All really good tools. Um, yeah, this so the, the leather goes quite floppy, a bit like it's wet molding when it's uh, got hot wax in it. So it's best to put the blade in there, and then you get a nice, 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 nice fit, nice snug fit. Yep. I'm just uh, cleaning up the handles before they go on. Finally, so a, a bit of sandpaper and some wire wool. Um,
and again they, they would have I'm you know pretty pretty sure they would have stayed on without the epoxy like but you know it's there why not and it's looking pretty bloody nice but uh, yeah I, I left the uh, left the black on the um, on most of the steel just because it I don't know it'll match the rest of his tools just clamping it just to make sure it doesn't move whilst the glue's going off a bit of Danish oil Yeah. Well, I've only really uh, spent a lot of time with a spoke shape before. I've never, I've never tried a, a pull knife. Um, you know, it's you've got got to pay attention a lot more to how uh, how much material you're taking off. But at the same time, you got the option to take big old slices in it, not just uh, not just little shavings. Uh, it works really nice, and I'm very happy with how it looks. It should fit in well with the rest of. Um, Steve's tools because he's got a he's got a tool roll of pretty old stuff and it's cool. Um, all right, take it easy, folks. Bye bye.